Hello VC, it's Steve Whitty here reporting in. Um, first video in about four weeks. Been on my holidays, uh, had an enjoyable time in Paphos, Cyprus. Um, sun shone, did nothing but eat and drink for 10 days. Um, my niece's wedding went well, and my sister celebrated her 50th birthday accordingly well as well. So I've been back in the country for a couple of weeks, so it gives me a chance to. Uh, to do some purchases, uh, some vinyl purchases, and just, I'm ready to show them off to you. So, first things first, I'm going to have a quick sip. This is hot water and lemon, just sort of protect my throat a little bit. Oh, that's better. Just before I went on holiday, you know, I had time off just to um, go around, um, change my money, to get my money sorted for change me sir into euros so I thought I'd just have a walk around the charity shops not in a position to buy it just so happened that the British Art Foundation in Sutton Coalfield had some records in most I'd got but the one that did, I didn't have which I ended up buying was Leonard Cohen's songs of love and hate um, which I was really pleased to pick up because um, it seemed to be the one album I'd, I'd missed out on so yeah Coming up to the first anniversary of his uh, of his passing, so I was really pleased to pick that one up. When I came back, um, I arrived back very early in the morning, so I didn't go, have to go to work um, that day. So after a couple of hours of sleep, um, went into like, went into Sutton Coalfield again, again just had a walk round the t town. Um, I changed my euros back into sterling, so I had a little bit of cash. I thought, well, hopefully, there might be some records floating around. Not much, but I did find this. This is Susie Quattro's greatest hits. Um, Susie Quattro, um, part of the Ch uh, Chinny Chap, um, Mike Chapman, and Nicky Chin um, state stable of artists on the Rack Lab label. Um, can the Can. She, um, Devil Gate Drive, the Corky singles. She had the image, took took a tomboy image, and dressed in her le leathers. Um, obviously, in America, be better known for playing Leather Toscadero in Happy Days. Um, she's still going. Apparently, she's um, Andy Scott and Don Powell. Um, She's, they've done an album called QSP, which is apparently very good. So I'm going to have to check that out. So they are playing a bit of a sort of like a glam rock super group. But yeah, I'm, yeah, it's so worth checking out. So please do get hold of this album. Then last week, first off, I brought a couple of singles at my local record store. These are like the old gold collection that I may have shown before where they put um, two songs on. Um, just to make up a single, so as, a, as a cheap single, uh, when the uh, when the originals were out of delete. So this is Small Faces Lazy Sunday, and it's backed up with Tim Soldier. And then this one, It's a Good Part, which I've got on the immediate label, um, but it's got backed by Here Comes the Nice. So I'm pleased to pick those up, get just a pound each. Nothing wrong with the, these old gold collections. A good way of building up, you know, singles. I do like my singles. I do like having nights where I just play, play singles. Just get the exercise. Just having to get out and ch change the record. Album-wise, um, in the pound bin, I managed to pick up a copy, a half decent copy of the Eagles' debut album. It's in the gatefold. Um, I think everybody knows where. It, who the Eagles consist of, what consisted of. Album was recorded in London, Glyn Johns produced it. So he produced Desperado. Um, so yeah, very happy to pick that up. For two pound, I was very pleased to pick a rather beat up copy cover wise, but the record plays great. Sisters of Mercy's Floodland. Um, it's a mixed batch of an album. It's a limited one. Of the, it was a limited number out, um, edition. Why I don't really know. Um, best known tracks on here: "This Corrosion" and "Dominion Rubber Russia" were produced by Jim Steinman, 
Um, he didn't produce all the albums, but he produced those two tracks. Um, Discoration was a big single, hit single. Um, the group at the time just consisted of Andrew Eldridge and Patricia Morrison, ex who came from the Gun Club. Um, prior to that, the, the lineup that recorded first, last, and always album um, split. Um, the guys like Wayne Hussey and Craig Adams went on to form the Mission. Um, but really pleased to pick up that as an album. This I found in the pound bins, Rush archives, and it only got the first two records, Rush and Fly By Night. And the reason I picked it up is the cover is in Mac. The cover is in really good nick. As I've already got a copy that was in a beat up cover. Um, it's I sort of just paid a pound for a cover. I'm not sure if it actually Pete charged me for it. Um, I said that's what I was going to buy it for. Um, but the records that I did buy were uh, upgrades. I think the Fly By Night version on here, it was an upgrade on the one that was in my original. So, yeah, more than happy to pick up that for a pound. Then, yesterday, on Friday, I went into the British Heart Foundation store in Solihull. And I was just, there's not much there, you know, or what was there was, I thought was overpriced, but there was a fair few singles there. And I picked up this batch of singles, and these are the ones I picked up. This is um, Blackfoot, Blackfoot Sue, Standing in the, in the Road. It was their main hit single, I think it might be the only hit single. Um, sort of a heavy, heavy rock vein. On the jam label, Blackfoot Sue probably be, um, was the first band that Boy George saw live. There we go. Then I picked up a copy of Edith Piaf's. If I get it in the right way, Non je ne regrette rien. No, I have no, I have no regrets, or something like that. Picked that up for a couple of pounds. What was funny, they had the English version in, in the box and they were charging £5 for that. And then another record, this was a top two, number two record in the UK, B.A. Robertson's Bang Bang. I think I might have shown a B.A. Robertson single before. Um, real name Brian Robertson, he, he was a songwriter, he called himself B.A. because he didn't want to get himself confused with Brian Robertson from Thin Lizzy. Um, Scottish singer, but if you ever heard the single Bang Bang, he does it in like a Cockney Patois style. Um, then the final single I picked picked up was Squeeze Another Nail in My Heart. You can tell I paid a pound for that. Um, I was going up to till to pay for these records, and that woman in the shop, she must have been the manageress, says, "Yeah, you like records, do you?" And you go, "Oh, yeah." Well, you want to have a look in the back to see what we've got? Okay. I thought, oh, maybe my Christmases will come early. Um, sadly, there wasn't really much there. It, to be honest, it was the same old Mantovani, Max Bygrace, Harry Seacombe, um, the sort of stuff that normally gets donated. Um, there were a couple of potentially interesting ones, but they're now cover and the vinyl looked pretty beat up, so I thought, Give them a miss. However, I did find this. This is the Four Seasons Who Loves You album. This came out in 1975 and it's a great album. Great album. It's got um, um, Who Loves You, the title track. December 1963, I Want a Night and Silver Star, which is a, probably the best track on the album. So I was really pleased to pick that up. So, yeah, you sometimes you get, you, you know, I don't think it well, was supposed to, but I think there was staff around in the back, so they didn't have to worry about me taking anything or anything like that. So I was, I was, I was, I was grateful that they allowed me to do that. I know not all shops would have that. You can ask, but not all shops would, would do that. So yesterday, I went to my local record emporium, and first up, I picked some singles. This, this is this is not America. David Bowie, Pat Metheny Group, 
which was the single for I'm trying to think which was the film. Oh yeah, uh, the Falcon and the Snowman. That was the song from that. Then a couple of records that took me back to my my um, 13, 14 year old self or 15 year old self. First up, the record I used to own was um, Dickie's Banana Splits. It's in banana yellow, black, uh, banana yellow uh, vinyl. Um, great record. Uh, in fact, I think the in total, both all this three tracks there. Side one, tra la la song. That's one minute fifty one. The, the, the banana splits, and then two songs on the B side. Hideous is one mi minute fifteen. And got it at the store, one minute twenty. So you got a three track single for under five minutes. Then in nineteen eighty <coughs> let me take another swig, my throat's drying up a little bit. Then in nineteen eighty, I sometimes you get records that come up that come out and it sticks with the conscious, particularly with the teenagers or kids. And maybe the young adults as well. Um, not because the tune's amazing, but what the tune's about. And you repeat phrases. One such record came out in 1980. Uh, it's his splodgeness abounds, Simon Templar. Now, it's not so much about the, the A side, Simon Templar, but one of the tracks on the B side, there was two tracks on the B side Michael Boo's Talking Bum. Um, I know to flatulence, and the final track, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps, please. Now, basically, that track is just guy going to the pub, it's going two pints of lager and a packet of crisps, please, and not being served. So it's two pints of lager and a packet of crisps, please. Musing at the time, um, this record began, this was a top ten single for Splodgeness Abounds. And they did follow, have another follow-up single. They did a version of uh, Rob Harris's Two Little Boys, which hit the top 20 as well. Sort of disappeared as soon as they, uh, as quickly as they came about. But, you know, it brought, brought took me back to my inner, my old 15-year-old self again. So I was pleased to pick up that. Then album-wise yesterday, I went to check the bins, and the pound bins initially. And so... First thing I picked up was Bob Seeker and the Silver Bullet Band Against the Wind. I haven't played it yet. This came out in 1980, so it's not one of the well known albums. But I'm aware that um, in the BC, Bob Seeker gets mentioned a lot, so I thought I'd give it a, for a pound, I'd give it a go. Uh, what else? Picked up. Oh, in the right order. Soundtrack to American Graffiti, it's double disc set. Again, it was in the pan bin. Final, I've cleaned it up, it's in reasonable shape. Um, cover's in not bad shape as well. So I was happy to pick up that. Very important film, American Graffiti. And I think reintroduced rock and roll to a lot of people, um, especially in, in the States. And then I was really pleased to find this. This is a, a, a compilation of American Heartbeat. I used to have the cassette of this years ago. Um, we've got here Eye of the Tiger, Rosanna, Journey, uh, Eye of the T uh, Survivor, Toto Journey, Blue Oyster Cult, um, Styx, Asia. It's very much a soft, a soft American rock at that time. Um, came out, I'm trying to think when it came out, 1984. As I said, I had the cassette and used to play the cassette to death. So I was pleased to pick up that. It was very pretty much immaculate copy. Anyway, and then while I was in the shop, I spotted this for a couple of pounds. This is Stevie Dan Vasia. Again, covers a bit beat. Um, but I was more than happy to pick it up. The vinyl's great. It cleans up well, so I was happy to pick that up. Then, oh, where else? Well, I'm in the shop, Pete. Yeah, and he says, "Do you want to pick this up for a pound?" 
Um, this is a band called Some Velvet Sidewalk. I don't know what it's about. I think it's very uh, sort of post punk and way of ish. He basically gave it me. Uh, said grab it for a pound. A lot of paper scuffs on it, so he couldn't really sell it. He couldn't even sell it for the bin. He said might be, might interest you. It's basically a, a it's a guitarist and a drum type type combo. Um, this album came out. I'm trying to think when it came out, I can't see. Um, so there's a... It doesn't start. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to listen to this and find out what this is. Um, so I went... I was talking to Pete, and he was just hanging around the shop for a bit. And he, did, he did had a record. I think it was... Um, the record says, oh, shall I put this in the pen? Or charge five pound. So he put it. Said, "Nah, life's too short to put it on a pile behind him." And I said, "Is that the um, some pound stuff that you going to add?" He said, "Yeah, can I?" And I said, "Can I have a little look?" And he says, "No, no problem." So out of it, I picked up some more records unexpectedly for a pound. This one I played last night. This is Eric Clapton's, and it's at his best. I don't know if you can read that. The cover's rather tatty. This is why it's going for a pound. Vinyl plays well. Now this is a compilation that came out in 1972, and it was brought, it was done by the Polydor RCO level label in order to um, sort of um, take Eric Clapton away from his US, US um, licensing deal, which was with Atlantic and Atco, um, and basically it's a compilation of the stuff that's come from the Blind Faith album. Um, the self-titled Eric Clapton album and and Layla and her other sorted love songs. That's where all for it, all the tracks came off. So in that sense, I've got a bit of a um, I've got got Layla the album, but I haven't got the Eric Clapton or Blind Faith album. So it's given me a bit of an op um, an opener, a bit sort of an introduction to those albums. Um, this was released on the back of earlier in the year in 1972. They released the best of Eric Clapton, which sort of um, prominently featured his Cream, his John Mayall, his Yardbirds uh, recordings, including also including a couple of um, um, uh, Layla, Layla, tracks from the Layla album. Um, so I'm very pleased because it's very rare. I've never seen this before, so for a habit for a pound, as I say, the covers falling, falling apart a little bit. So. A few weeks back, I picked up an album in the charity shop by Hot Tuna. So in this batch of pound sync records I picked up, there's another Hot Tuna live album. It's a double album. It's called Double Dose. Um, it came out in 1978 on the Grunt label. Okay, not open up. Again, the butt sleeve's a bit beaten up. Uh, you can tell from the side there, and which is reason why it's only cost me pound. But the innards of the band members. Oh, Dreamer there. Same thing with Grunt Label. Um, I haven't heard it yet, so I'll be interested to see what it sounds like. Um, again, you've got Jack Cassidy and Nick Book. Uh, yeah, pleased to have that album. And then probably the album I really was so pleased to pick up. It's Ian Hunter's debut album. I know James Griffith showed this uh, in his recent um, uh, charity shop hall a few weeks back. Yeah, really pleased to pick this up. His, his solo debut album. Again, in really good nick covers in good nick. The reason it was for a pound because he could, Pete couldn't get the um, sticker up, staying off in it till off there. Um, so I know it's a little mark, but not anything that's too worrying. But he, you know, he couldn't charge any more than a pound. Uh, I think Ian Hunter's one of the great um, British song singer songwriters. To find this, you know, he's got once been twice shy. Um, yeah, really, really made up to have this. Then a copy of Scorpions' Virgin Killer album. Um, Thankfully, it's the reissue, not the original cover. 
Um, yep, this came out in not the printed world, so I can't read it. Oh, it might be nineteen seventy six or something like that. Um, yeah, nineteen seventy six. Um, still had Uli John Roth on guitar at the time. Um, I don't really know the album. I know it's the Scorpions. And I got entranced a few weeks back, a few months back. So pleased to pick that up. I then I picked this up as well. This is Steely Dan. And this is an album called Sun Mountain. And this came out on the Castle Communication label in 1984. And this is songs featured when sort of pre Steely Dan. Um, Walter De Walter Decker and Donald Fagan met up and they were right started writing songs and it's sort of like a brill building type of scenario. So these are sort of like songs that they did and recorded prior to actually forming Steely Dan and just comes under Steely Dan um because it's quite a convenient moniker to put them under. So I haven't listened to it but I've been told it's it, it sort of looks quite good. So it will be an interesting listen, just an interesting curio to just to have. And then left the shop, went to the char another charity shop and managed to pick up very cheaply another co better copy of Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. Can't go wrong with a bit of Rod now and again. So there you go. So I've been a bit busy since I've come back. I've um, been watching your videos. I've been pretty much up to date. I'm enjoying what I see. Obviously what happened with Metal, Metal Mickey and the, um, and the prize that never happened was a bit of a sad scenario. Um, and I think maybe a lesson to everybody. Um, but we're not to dwell over that because Mickey's a decent, decent, a decent bloke, and I think he, you know, having him been treated in his rock, well, he's been ro ro royally shafted there a little bit. Uh, I feel. But so that's it. I'm, hopefully, we'll get back to more videos. Maybe a few more reviews um, coming up to Christmas. So I've got to start my Christmas shopping today. Great. Um, so my money's not my own as normal. Um, so I'm going to leave it there because I've been wittering on there. So hopefully you liked what you see. If you did and you want to watch watch some more, click on the subscribe button. If uh, you want to comment, feel free to comment. I'll always reply back to you. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't mind either way. Um, so until the next time, you know, enjoy, have an enjoyable week, VC. Take care of yourselves, keep smiling and keep listening to that music.